In the words of the great patriot, Malcolm X, the chickens came home to roost. The prince was gone, and the gilded age of liberalism suddenly very shaky. On the day John F. Kennedy was shot, he was going to deliver a speech in a city called Dallas. At one point in the speech, he planned to discuss American aid to countries on the edge of the communist front. Quote, our assistance to these nations can be painful, risky, and costly, as is true in Southeast Asia today, but we dare not weary of the task. For our assistance makes possible the stationing of 3.5 million allied troops along the communist frontier at one-tenth the cost of maintaining a comparable number of American soldiers. A successful communist breakthrough in these areas necessitating direct United States intervention would cost us several times as much as our entire foreign aid program and might cost us heavily in American lives as well. Reducing our efforts to train, equip, and assist their armies can only encourage communist penetration and require in time the increased overseas deployment of American combat forces. Unquote. His final posthumous words, his legacy beyond the grave. He was making it clear what had to be done if the other side broke through, and he was ready for it, though of course he never got the chance. The liberal myth-making historians like Theodore Sorensen and Arthur Schlesinger Jr., both Kennedy men, quickly went to work on the Kennedy myth a myth made possible by his assassination. Like the communist historians of that century who altered history for political reasons, the liberals rewrote the early history of the Vietnam War. Sorensen blamed the war on communist aggression from the North, while Schlesinger blamed it on Eisenhower. Sorensen also played down the importance of the war and pictured Kennedy as a poor victim of circumstances. Quote, he was simply going to weather it out, a nasty, untidy mess to which there was no other acceptable solution." Unquote. Schlesinger, in his prize-winning book, now known as the fictional legend, The Book of a Thousand and One Days, Schlesinger wrote, quote, "...whether we were right in 1954 to undertake this commitment will long be a matter of interest to historians, but it had ceased by 1961 to be of interest to policymakers." Unquote. This is typical of the American arrogance of that era, failing even to question, let alone alter, the American presence in Vietnam. And so the liberals continued to absolve Kennedy from any responsibility for the war. But the record seems clear. I am struck by the common threads running through that history, the continuity. Kennedy started the key programs of the American invasion, and after his death he left not only his programs as a legacy, but his advisors as well. The men he himself had picked, Johnson, McNamara, the Bundys, Rusk, Rostow, Lodge, Taylor, who escalated Kennedy's programs until Vietnam was almost completely destroyed. Of course, you can't blame Kennedy for the full horror of the war, as escalated by Johnson and Nixon but he can be blamed as the man who not only began the war, but began the escalation of that war as well. It may not have ended in liberal hands, but the war never lost the character of its liberal beginnings. Looking back from this anarchist world of ours, what is most incredible is that there is no indication that President Kennedy ever seriously questioned the rightness of American involvement in the war or worried about the lives of the Vietnamese. It was for him really a technical question of what to do, not whether to do it. The same thing with Johnson and Nixon. It was a military, not a political or social or human problem. What helps to win the war, we support. What interferes with the war effort, we oppose. We are not there to see a war lost. Any one of them could have said it.